Can you, ooh, can you guys hear me? Testing, can you guys see or hear me? I feel like I look really bright right now. Am I live? Okay, I am live, awesome. Hi everyone, I don't know where to look because Okay, I've turned my laptop on and you can hear myself and Dad, Dad could you mute your computer? <laughs> Sorry guys for the technical difficulties. Okay, I'm going to look into that. Um, so yeah, I just got home like 10 minutes ago, rushed everything and I thought I would do a quick haul because the price line haul or oh, sale is still on and it'd be easier than me filming, editing a whole video, which normally takes me a few days. And that's really tough right now with work. If you guys follow my Instagram and see me posting all those obnoxious stories. Um, so yeah, Obi's just gonna chill with me until he gets sick and tired. I'm gonna have him on my lap. And hopefully his snoring isn't too loud because he breathes and snores at the same time. So the purpose of this video is to show you guys what I've hauled. I wanna make it conversational, chatty, so definitely say hi, ask any questions about anything. You know, Let me know what you guys have also bought during the sale, are thinking of buying. If you've tried any of these products, I would absolutely love to know. So do share your thoughts with me. I thought I would start off first of all by actually showing you. Um, my dad is being my little video production assistant, by the way. I usually do everything by myself, but he's helping me out because I had to rush today. Um, okay, so I thought I would start off by showing you guys what I'm actually using right now in my skincare routine. Okay, now I need to put my dog away because he is he's being a little squirmy bugger. Ugh. Okay, so this is currently everything except for... Let me just take this out. I'm not using this, but I just wanted to show you guys that I bought this during the last price line skincare haul. Didn't look up any reviews, just bought it and then read the ingredients and then realized that it might actually be bad. That's gonna be the pretty much the gist of this video. I hauled everything yesterday while working from home on my one hour lunch break. I had to go in, go out, had a list of things that I wanted to get, didn't have enough time to review anything. So we're just gonna talk about it. So if you have tried anything, it would be amazing if you could let me know if you have. So I might go in again tomorrow and return things that I haven't opened yet. Okay, so really quickly, really quickly, this is what I'm using now um, to cleanse. I've been using the QV Gentle Wash. I know I did a video on my channel a few months ago with my drugstore combination skincare routine. Basically, I've pretty much stopped using half of the products since then and the reason why is because I am a massive stinge when it comes to makeup and just in general and in life. Thank you. Shout out to my <coughs> to my mum for instilling those positive habits. But yeah, I pretty much stock up on my skincare whenever there are sales. And yeah, honestly, I'm not super fussy as well. My skin is, I don't break out too easily, which is I'm extremely grateful for. And my skin is not overly sensitive, sensitive as well, which is why I don't really mind using the basic products. But this is what I'm using at the moment. And even though I've done the haul, I'm going to continue using QV. This is an Australian brand. And if any of my American viewers are watching, then you probably haven't heard of this. This is Australian. Dr. Dre did a video on the brand QV. And it's pretty much a dermatologist recommended brand. It's fragrance free, um, perfect for anyone that has eczema, things like that. When I was a kid years ago, my mum took me to the dermatologist because I had all these weird sensitive irritation and reaction things on my face and the dermatologist re recommended this. My younger sister also has eczema, so she uses this. You can actually use it on your face as well as your body, but honestly, it's a really good gentle cleanser and the only difference between QV and CeraVe is the fact that CeraVe has ceramides in their um, products and QV doesn't, although I think they have a new range that does. But anyways, enough about that. Then the rest of the products I'm using are, um, I'm trying out the Pons Cold Cream Cleanser, which you can see here. I'm doing a review on that and I've been using that for about two weeks so far, so good. And then I've got my normal um, Ole moisturizer slash sunscreen. And then I've been 
using my derma a overnight peel that I still have which is amazing and then on and off sometimes I use the Cetaphil moisturizer at night um, and I'm missing my rosehip oil but that's what I've been pretty much using every night to moisturize my face so those are all the things I just want to make sure that I'm not running out of time okay so um, okay now I'm going to show you all the things that I've hauled I'm going to start off with uh, let me just grab Okay, I'm going to start off with, I'll just pop it on the ground, <laughs> sunscreen. So I bought three sunscreens. I am not a sunscreen or skincare expert. I'm still learning skincare, still new to it, still working out what the difference is between mineral and chemical sunscreens. And I was in Priceline trying to read the ingredients, trying to see if I could identify and differentiate between the two, but I couldn't. So um, if anyone's tried any of these, let me know. The first one that I picked up is the Cancer Council Sensitive Skin, Sensitive Sunscreen. It's in the green bottle. And I also have the Invisible Zinc SPF 50 Face and Body Mineral Sunscreen. Now I know this is a mineral one because it does say mineral. I think these ones are chemical, but I'm not 100% sure. And then I've got the Neutrogena Hydro Boost, which is SPF 50. Now this one I actually am wearing today. I tried it out for the first time. I use my Olay moisturizer and sunscreen as normal in the morning, and then I applied this on top. And I have to say it's so weird. Let me just do like a swatch for you guys. I don't think it's picking up well on my phone. My little crappy iPhone 6 that I'm using to film this live but that's what the sunscreen looks like and it's not really picking up well on camera but it has a little bit of a blue tinge and it has a very strong fragrance with it which smells good though it smells amazing but I don't know if it would be good for sensitive skin obviously um yeah I don't know if you guys can tell but that's the sunscreen it has a little bit of a blue tinge but so far so far so good it wears fairly well under makeup i have to say that when i applied it it felt like i was using a sticky wet base primer and my face looked shiny as hell when i just before i started the live i just like mattified my face and put some more powder on because i looked like a freaking disco ball um but so far it's been pretty good it just has a very um strong fragrant smell it's it smells it smells nice though but yeah, I'll continue to use these. I will definitely be doing reviews on these products and I'm going to be trying out each product for at least two weeks and trying one new product at a time so that if something goes wrong, I know which product it is. Um, but so far, I'm using that and I'm, I'm going to try that out and I'll let you guys know. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go panning with these. I probably will go panning with the sunscreen just because I don't like to have multiple things of the same thing open at once, knowing that they're going to expire. So yeah, so I've got the sunscreens and um, that's the Neutrogena one. The Invisible Sink. Queenie said that Invisible Sink is so good and I have to agree even though I've never tried it but when I was researching this came up a lot especially on the skincare reddit site. Just open it out of the box. Um, that's what it looks like here and it's SPF 50 for face and body, mineral sunscreen, natural zinc oxide. And yeah, that's, that's what I got there. I'm excited to try that one. And then the last sunscreen that I got is the Cancer Council Sensitive Sunscreen, excuse me. And that one is SPF 50. All of these products are SPF 50 and pretty much the reason why I wanted to get more sunscreens is as if you've watched my last skincare video, it's because I was using that Olay, let me grab it, that Olay moisturizer and sunscreen. And now that I'm starting to get into skincare more and learning about it slowly, I'm realizing that this is really not enough to protect your face from the sun, especially if you're in Australia with the really harsh UVA, UVB rays. So that's why I got that and how much they all were since I have my receipt with me, I can actually tell you guys really quickly. The sunscreens, this one was the most expensive one with the 40% off sale. It came down to $19. The Hydro Boost 
that with the sale came down to $10 and the Cancer Council was the cheapest one. It came down to $9.30. Okay, so we have done sunscreen. Awesome. Now let's talk about nip and fab. Okay, so let me just chuck this here. Okay, so I picked up two products from the brand Nip and Fab. The first one is this Nip and Fab Glycolic Night Pads Fix Extreme 100 Pads Pack. And I have actually used this product before. I've used it maybe well over more than a year ago and I bought the normal size pack. So I'm just repurchasing it because I remember it being good, but it's been way too long that I can't remember how good it was. I'm buying it because I ran out of chemical exfoliants. I completely ran out and glycolic acid is one of those um, AHAs and that's just an overall good, um, generally more gentle chemical exfoliant, I think. And I prefer using the night pads just because it's easy and disposable. And I've actually never played around with serums before. So that's going to be interesting. And that brings me to the next product that I have, which is the Nip and Fab Salicylic, Sal Salicylic Fix Con Concentrate Extreme 2% Serum. As I was saying, I've never tried chemical exfoliants as a serum or anything like that. I'm really, really new to skincare, guys. I was pretty, like, so basic, and I still kind of am. But, yeah, has anyone tried this? Has anyone tried this? Because I did not research any reviews at all. I know The Ordinary does a really good serum that pretty much everyone uses, but I wanted to buy a brand that would actually be 40% off during the sale and not full price. So I thought I would try this one out, and it wasn't super expensive either. This one was $24 with the sale. Okay, it's kind of cut off. I can't tell if it's 24 or 28. The three looks like an eight, but actually that's kind of expensive now that I think about it. But I think this brand in general is on the pricier side at price lines. So that's fine. Oops, I accidentally turned my volume on my laptop. Um, okay, and the these pads were also $24 or $28, I can't tell from the receipt. So these are gonna be my chemical exfoliant products. Super excited to try it out. I think I'm gonna go with, I think I'm gonna try this one first just because I totally run out of BHAs and my nose has been a little, BH recently has been super oily, um, sebaceous filaments are acting up. So definitely need to try that. And I'll update you guys as well on how that goes. The next few products that I wanted to talk about um, were was from the brand Derma E. So, as you guys know, I am a massive, massive fan of Derma E. This brand is so highly underrated. If you go into a skincare addiction on Reddit and you search this brand up, People have said so many good things. Actually, if you look this brand up on YouTube, literally there are no bad comments about this product. It's vegan, cruelty-free, has basically all the good ingredients and it's also clinically focused as well and like environmentally conscious, doesn't have a lot of the bad stuff. I don't, okay, you, of course you guys can't read that. That iPhone is such bad quality, but doesn't have any sulfates, no fragrance, no former no petrolatum, no, okay, I'm not gonna try and pronounce these things, so I will include the um, products with the ingredient list because I'm just gonna butcher that and I don't wanna waste your time. So yeah, I got the vitamin C concentrated serum with hyaluronic acid. Last time in my skincare video that I had, I was using the vitamin C moisturizer. That one, I really did enjoy it. I completely finished the whole thing, so pan that, pan that little girl pan that little girl, pan that product. That sounded really weird. And I enjoyed it, but I guess my skin got kind of used to it and I wanna push more towards serums instead of moisturizers because I do use oils at night. And I'm hoping that this one will be really good, something that I can layer on under, um, in the morning and at the night and during nighttime as well. Let me know if anyone's tried this product. I think this one is actually better than the moisturizer. So 
hoping that it will be good, but I'm glad I could replace that. And then moving on, we only have three more products left, which I think this live is going to end really, really soon because I don't really have anything else to talk about and I'm not getting many questions at the moment, which is fine. Uh, the next product that I picked up is the Egyptian Magic All Purpose Skin Cream. Now, this is a product that I've heard a lot about, but at the same time, I haven't done enough research to actually look at what the product is. I do know that um, every time I'm on, I'm on iHerb, which I've been on like an iHerb fan for years, if you go onto my channel five years ago, you'll see me doing a lot of hauls from there. Every time you're on iHerb, this this Egyptian Skin Magic Cream is always sold out. What it actually is though, since it says it's all purpose, I'm just gonna read out some reviews. Um, this has incredible reviews, by the way. It has like four and a half stars. If you look on Google from 3,000, more over 3,000 reviews, which is really, really good statistically. So people are saying that, oh, okay. So someone said about this product, I use this as a last step of my 10 skin step routine. It is full of everything bees, propolis, royal jelly, beeswax, and then of course, olive oil. People are saying it's a cult classic, great for eczema. People are saying you can use it under your eyes as an under eye cream, holy grail, a lot of, lot of great products. I picked up the smaller tub. So this is the one that is one fluid ounce or 30 milliliters. There was a larger size one and the stinge in me wanted to buy the larger size one because I knew that I would be getting better value. But I thought, you know what, I'm gonna try it out, see if it's actually good. And then if it's good and I finish it, then I'll purchase the large one. Let me know if anyone has tried this and what your thoughts are on the Egyptian skin, Egyptian magic cream. I'm really, really keen to try that one out. And then the last two products, I'm just gonna group them together. They are lip balms I picked up First of all, Carmex, once again, this was in my skincare routine video. I'm still using this now. I'm using the original one. I've been using her for almost three years now. First time I used her was when I was in the US and I was studying at Yukon and it was winter there and I was experiencing real American winter and my lips were basically more chapped than, I was gonna make a really lame joke, but I'm, not, I'm gonna retract that. Um, yeah, I picked up the Pineapple Mint Carmex Lip Balm and I really wanted to grab the original one, but this was the only one that they had. I think this was $3 with the sale. Let me just check. Uh, it was, yeah, about $3.60 with the sale. And I forgot to tell you how much this cost, so let me just do that now. This cost $18 with the sale, which is pretty decent for a 30 mil product considering this is also 30 mils and this was $24. So it's really interesting comparison to see how packaging can be so confusing. And, you know, I always like to figure out how much I'm value I'm getting per milliliter or 10 milliliters and comparing it when I look at products, which is what I did with the sunscreens as well, which is why I couldn't decide. I think in the end, this was the better value because it was cheaper and had a little bit more product. Um, but that's a bit of sidetrack to what I was saying. The last thing that I picked up was the Dermal Therapy Lip Balm. I'm not using Carmex, which is a shock, but I thought I would try out a different lip balm after I finished my current Carmex that I'm wearing, just to see if there's something better out there. Again, I've not researched this product at all. Don't know if anyone has used it and what attracted me to the product was the SPF 50. I always forget and neglect lip care and just think about face care, skin care. And honestly, lip care is just as important. It's on your face. And yeah, that's pretty much why I got it. I don't know really much about it. That's literally everything that I got. I don't have anything else. This was a really quick live but I wanted to get this up so that I could have it up during the sale in case anyone was interested and is thinking of buying things. The sale ends tomorrow on Friday. I might actually stop by a second time myself like I always do and pick up a couple more things. 
Ooh, Tal said that the comics is so good and girl, you are right. It is really, really good. It hasn't failed me for, for years. I've been using it for so long and it is a holy grail of mine. So I really recommend anyone that has really dry chapped lips and needs something that's quite strong and effective. I think this may be good for sensitive lips as well. I think it has a bit of a weird fragrance to it. I don't know if the product itself has fragrance. Oh, it, it has menthol, which gives you that kind of cooling, cooling effect. Um, oh, the last thing that I wanted to add that I didn't buy, but I am going to try is something that my younger sister actually bought. And she's been so sweet that she's going to let me try using the face mask where she came shopping with me when we went to Priceline yesterday during my lunch break. And we were both getting like the different alternative products so that we could try each other's but she picked up the Sukin Rich Moisture Facial Mask. I've run out of my face mask. I was using the Derma E Hyaluronic Acid Face Mask, which I loved. But I don't know if they're discontinued at Priceline because I could not see them, could not find them. I think Derma E at Priceline is slowly being discontinued or they're just not stocking it or maybe it's my local Priceline. But yeah, I've tried. I'm excited to try this out. This it says that it's for specifically dry and distressed skin types. The ingredients that it has, um, water, rosehip, aloe, vitamin E, mandarin, orange, vanilla, tangerine, lavender, which lavender is a fragrance. And then a bunch of other, oh, it has benzyl alcohol, which is interesting if it's for dry skin. Anywho, I'm keen to try that out and I will do a review. Oh, hi, Copal. Thank you for joining us. You should definitely check out the sale tomorrow and let me know what you get, what you get during the sale. But that's pretty much everything. I Thank you so much, guys, for guys, gals, humans. Thank you for joining me for this live. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your night if you're here in Australia or in the morning if you're across the side of the world. Thanks again for taking the time out of your day to watch this live, to watch this video. I really appreciate it. Um, Patootie had a question, so a little sidetrack to that. Patootie said, what are the essentials we should get? Honestly, I am not a dermatologist. I am not an esthetician. I am a skin care, skin care, skin care enthusiast in training. And I would say at the most basic level, you just need a cleanser, moisturizer and sunscreen SPF. Those are like the three essentials you start off with. And then once you get more experience and you learn more about skincare, that's when you start adding a little bit more of the complex things like your chemical exfoliants, your face masks, your serums. And then eventually you'll start to learn how to layer things. I, I don't even layer myself, so I don't know why I'm giving this advice when I don't I'm not, you know, I don't have a 10, 10 step skincare routine or anything like that, but I would say start off with that and have a look at some um, educators online. I have really, really been enjoying Cave of Beauty. She's on Twitter. So I will link all the people that are interested in the comments and description if I can figure out how this live thing works, but she is amazing. I've also been watching Dr. Dre, Dr. Sam Bunting, a little bit of skincare by Hiram. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out, you know, get as many sources that I can. Um, obviously Reddit is my favorite place to get information because it's, you know, comes from non-biased people with no agendas, real people that are, you know, talking about their skincare routines. So definitely start off there. Um, one thing that I did want to add that I, oh, well now it's been 24 minutes. That is a very long time. Okay, I'm gonna, this is the last thing that I'm gonna say and then I'm gonna cut off live. Something that I've been doing that has honestly changed my skincare routine. Also, I just realized that I'm using something and I didn't even show you guys. And that is the face halo. You guys know that I've been using that based on my last skincare video and the I'm trying out this Duval spinning brush. So I'll be doing a review on that. They gifted that product to me for review. So I will give you details of that so far. But aside from that, 
Something that I've been doing differently in the past couple of weeks is actually applying my moisturizer at night, specifically to damp skin. I don't know if anyone has heard of this, but if you watch Dr. Dre or you're really, really into the skincare community, then, then you would know this, but it's actually not good to dry your face with a face towel or let it air dry completely when you're moisturizing your face. Essentially, you want to be applying your moisturizer, your serums and your things like that to damp skin. And the reason for that is because of something called potential severe trans epidermal water loss. I hope I've said that right because I literally watched um, a video on it like a couple of weeks ago. And since I've been doing that, guys, yes, Talia, yes, Talia, Talia especially if you have dry skin, even if you have oily skin, I have both. I've got dry, oily skin. But ever since I've been doing that, it has been a freaking game changer. I've noticed that the sebaceous filaments, my nose area has, I, I honestly think that my sebaceous filaments, which look like blackheads, but they're not, have shrunk and minimized since I've been doing this. If you guys have never tried it, try it for the next few days. Come back to me. Let me know how your skin feels and reacts. But it has made my skin feel like it doesn't overproduce oil and essentially it's because when you're taking water out of your your face and removing it there's a little bit of dehydration that comes with that tonight so definitely if you have dry skin even if you have oily skin as well the fact is that when you do have oily skin a lot of people tend to stray away from products that have oil in it simply because they think oh oil adding on top of oil is not good you know but Honestly, it is good for you. The reason why your face is producing so much oil is because you're stripping your face of oil and then it you know, overcompensates. So try that out. And then the second thing that I wanted to mention that has been a game changer is cleansing your face for 60 seconds when you use a cleanser. I had not heard of that until I found the Golden Prescription, who's an esthetician in LA. I'll link her details below. But when you're cleansing your face, you want to be cleansing for 60 seconds. For me, I'm like forever in a rush with everything I do in life. So when I cleanse my face, I used to just like pop that dish on and then I would just wash it off. But again, that's not good for you. I mean, I don't know. I wouldn't say it's bad for you, but you'll get more out of the cleanser that you have if you're actually cleansing for 60 seconds. So minimum 60 second rule it's a complete thing if you look if you look up the hashtag 60 second rule on twitter you'll see heaps of people tweeting their results from before and afters from the golden prescriptions um twitter page so definitely check that out but those are two skincare hap two for those are two skincare habits that i've been doing that have really changed the game for me i haven't tried like any different products at all and that's just made a huge difference and really helped me to get as much as I can from my skincare products. So now that I've gone on that tangent, now I'm finally ending it here. Thanks again, good night. Hope you all have a good time and are staying well and safe and I will catch you guys in my next video, which may be a while because it's really busy at work, but I will do my best to try and get a video up. So I'll see you guys later, bye.